Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Earls Hall Baptist Church. You've all been here more than I have in the last few months. Uh, it's great to be back after a three month sabbatical. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to have that time and that uh, break uh, and that time to focus and to read. And uh, thank you to all of you for all that you've done over the last few months, to the leadership team, uh, for Andy and Anna for their pastoral care, to Katie. When I, I was going through this earlier, John said, and me. So, and John at the back as well. But thank you to all of you. It's great to be back. It's lovely to see all of you and some new faces as well. If you're a visitor here today for the first time, you are very welcome. There's tea and there's coffee served after our service. And it's raining. <laughs> but that's because it's autumn and we live in England. Uh, it was up in Scotland. It was wetter there. Um, but it is lovely to be back. Uh, I never got to Peru, which was one of the things that I was uh, hoping to do. That's still something that should be happening in the new year. Uh, but I did get to Devon. Um, so went to Lee Abbey. That's a Christian retreat centre near Linton and Linmouth on the north coast of Devon. And... Uh, it was a week of refreshing and gentle teaching on centering our life on Jesus. So for the next three weeks in our sermon series, we're going to be thinking a little bit around our identity in Jesus Christ. But that's for a little bit later in the service. We are here today to worship Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, our Lord, our King, our friend. Because of all that he has done for us, we choose to come together. We choose to gather, and some of us are gathering online, so welcome to you as well. But we choose to enter into God's presence together. It is Jesus who set us free from sin and from death. It is Jesus who has blessed us in the heavenly realms. It is Jesus who has offered us forgiveness who has made a way for us to be holy, set apart, redeemed. He has given us and shown us amazing grace. He has given us a new life. And he is leading us on, on a journey of faith, on into eternity. He has given us something amazing. Family, church, family. Uh, so what I want to invite you to do is just to say hello. And if there's someone you don't know sitting around you and you're part of the church normally, please do make a point of saying as well. And if you like the sound of that, there's tea and coffee afterwards and the conversation can continue. <laughs> um, receive from God, for God has something for us today. At the very least, his presence by his Holy Spirit with us. Are you here today willing to receive from God? For he has something for you. He has his presence by his spirit with us. And as we hold out our hands, let's begin to sing quietly, Who is there like you? Let's sing together. Even so 
rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people would hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Let's sing in Christ alone. Oh, 
Amen. Uh, it's good to be uh, back in uh, good company singing amazing songs of praise and worship together. What a blessing and a, what a privilege as well. Uh, we've got a few different notices. If you uh, have a bulletin, you'll see that there's lots of different things going on. There's activities in the ark this week from Tuesday to Friday. There's the warm welcome, toddlers and toast, joyful dancing. I think there's a picture for joyful dancing as well. There we go. Hey, joyful dancing, fault, uh, waltz and foxtrot. Um, new course starting on Wednesday the 9th of November, 7.15 to 9. Um, if you want to know more about that, please speak to Christina. Uh, and there's safe space on Thursday and there's the food bank on Friday. A house group has started in Stella's home. If you want to know more, please do speak to her. And if you're interested in either hosting or being part of a house group, again, please do speak to me or Andy. Now, on the weekend of the 19th and 20th of November, that's in two weeks' time, it's our church anniversary. It's not a big one, we're 83. Um, 83 years young. Uh, but on Saturday the 19th, we're going to be having a quiz, and Tom is going to talk a little bit more about the quiz. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, as Tom said, on the 19th, which is a Saturday of November, <clears throat> JAM, which is the uh, Sunday evening uh, Bible study group for uh, youth, is going to be hosting the Tear Fund Big Quiz Night and that is uh, yeah, going to be part of the anniversary weekend of the church. So uh, there's a brief video here that I've, uh, we could play that. Hi, I'm Leslie Slaughter, climate activist and environmental scientist. And I'm often online talking about the things we can all do to make a difference around the world. And today I'm here to talk about another thing you can do, joining Tear Fund for their big quiz night. Over the last four years, Tens of thousands of people have joined in and have raised over £800,000 to support the work of Tear Fund, lifting people out of extreme poverty all around the world. You can join in on the 19th of November and follow this link to find out more. I hope to see you there. So that's uh, very exciting. Um, it is free to enter, but we will be accepting donations, so... Uh yeah, and we will also hopefully be having cakes, uh, which will also be given out on a donation basis. So uh, feel free to, uh, yeah, come along, bring friends, families. It will be a great night. It's from 7.30 till 9 here at the church on the 19th of November. And, uh, yeah, feel free to come along to that. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. The girl in the video, her parents were my youth leaders at church growing up. It's funny seeing her representing Tear Fund. Um, yeah, so that's exciting. On the 20th, also our anniversary weekend, uh, when we have an anniversary, we usually give a thank offering. A thank offering is then given by us on that Sunday and given to a local charity or organization. So please, if you're a member of the church, you're aware that that's the thing that's going to happen, but just let me forewarn you that that's going to be happening on the 20th. It's also a church meeting. I don't know if we've ever had a church meeting on the day of an anniversary, so that's going to be extra special. Okay. Um, now, some people have been talking about the Christmas shoebox appeal, which we aren't involved with. with we, we used to do the Samaritan's Purse shoebox appeal. Uh, we've not been doing that for the last few years. Um, but if you would like to give sweet treats uh, with a reasonable shelf life, we can give them out from our distribution centre of the food bank. Uh, if you're able to do that over the next few weeks, you can just put your donations in the nice new box uh, that's out in the foyer. And if you can do that up to the 4th of December, uh, Sarah will be able to put all of those things appropriately aside and we can give them out in the weeks leading up to Christmas. So, uh, yeah, anything sweet, uh, even reasonable length date, mince pies and things like that, we can give out. So, uh, thank you. And that's lots. There's lots and I think there's even more. If I've missed anything, have I missed anything? 
Anyone got a, a, a notice that I've missed? No? Brilliant. In which case, Chris, would you come and share with us? but I think of a frog in my throat, so I have to come prepared. <coughs> Good morning. Right, I thought we'd start with a visual aid. I'm not going to ask for volunteers, but if I ask you to help me, I would be very, very grateful if you would. And just to say, you only have to stand there. You don't have to do anything really, really clever. So, I thought we would watch adults this week. So, if you're six foot tall or more, or five foot eleven will do. Can you come and stand in the front for me? <laughs> Anybody else not willing to admit how tall they are? Right, could you make like, could you sort of squash up and make like a wall? Yeah, step, step forward. <laughs> Can you step forward because I want space behind you. That's it. Nice and close together, chaps. Right. Now, imagine that this stretches to the sides and to the back. Lots of people. Jenny, would you mind coming and helping me? Jenny, could you stand behind me, please? <laughs> uh, <laughs> can you see Jenny? Do you think Jenny can see you? Could you wave so they know you're there? <laughs> why can't she see and why can't we see her? Why? Because she's short. That's right. Jenny's my friend, and I hope she will continue to be my friend after this. <laughs> now, these are lovely people at Earl's Hall, and if this was in Earl's Hall, they would make a space and let Jenny come in front of them. <laughs> but this isn't what happened in the Bible story today. Thank you all so much. Would you like a, a reward for helping me? from the Bible today is about a man who wanted to see Jesus but he couldn't because he was short and there were too many people about who were taller than him and his name was Zacchaeus. Now Zacchaeus was very 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 disliked by the people because he was a tax collector. Now tax collectors are still not very much like today but we collect our taxes differently in biblical times, people had to actually go and pay their taxes. And Zacchaeus was one of the people who collected the money. Now, Zacchaeus was badly behaved. You know, adults behave badly too, not just children. But just to be clear, it was nothing to do with him being short while he was badly behaved. Right, breaking the story for a maths question. <clears throat> Are you paying attention? I went shopping recently and I wanted to buy some wet wipes. They were a pound a packet or four for five pound. <laughs> this is absolutely true. I'm not making this up. This is true. So what is wrong with that? How much should it have been for four packets? Four pounds. Well, I only bought three. But if I'd bought four, how much overcharged would I have been? One pound, yeah. Right, back to the story. This is the sort of thing that Zacchaeus did. He overcharged people for their taxes. And what do you think he did with the money he overcharged them with? Kept it, kept it, went in his pocket. You can see why he wasn't liked, can't you? But Zacchaeus really wanted to see Jesus. 
So he ran ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree and waited for Jesus to come along. I wonder what he thought while he was sitting up there in the tree. <laughs> I wonder if he thought, oh, good view. It <laughs> doesn't matter that I'm short, I can see fine now. Along came Jesus, and to Zacchaeus' amazement, Jesus stopped at the tree, looked up, and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. I think Zacchaeus must have been pretty shocked that Jesus stopped and knew he was up there, and probably even more shocked that Jesus knew his name. But Jesus didn't stop there. He said, and I'm coming to stay in your house today. Zacchaeus was thrilled and happy to have Jesus come to his house. The people were not thrilled or happy. They muttered and they grumbled and they said, what is Jesus doing going to stay with someone like that? Someone who does things wrong. But Zacchaeus spent time with Jesus. He listened to Jesus and that changed him. And Zacchaeus said he would give half his wealth away to the poor. And if he cheated anyone, and I reckon there'd have been lots of them, he would not only give them their money back, but he would give them four times as much back. Now, for, and I'm very thankful for this, we don't have to climb a tree to get Jesus' attention. He knows us all by name. He doesn't say, that lot down there at Earl's Hall. He knows us each one. We sometimes get people's names wrong, and he did last week. Or sometimes we can't remember someone's name, but Jesus always knows our name. And if we listen to Jesus, he will change us. Perhaps we need to be reminded by Jesus of something we need to say sorry for, or something we need to put right, or just be reminded that Jesus is there for us and wants to talk to us and for us to listen to him. Or perhaps we need to understand that Jesus came to earth for all of us who have done things wrong so that we can be say sorry and be forgiven. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to earth for us. Thank you that you know our names and want us to spend time listening to you. Amen. Got one more thing to say. On this box, it says, share good times. Good times and knowing Jesus. So, Katie, can I give these to you to share in Sunday school as you share about Jesus? She's going. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sing again. Uh, it's a song. It's a song we're allowed to clap along to. Okay, so that means we need to be standing up, ready to sing. It's from everlasting to everlasting. You are God, and if you follow Tom with the beat, you'll be clapping in time.
It's a time for the children and young people to go to the groups. Let's just pray for them as they go. Lord Jesus, we thank you for uh, the life that's in our fellowship, for our children, for our young people, for all of us. And as the children and young people go to the groups, we pray that you would bless them, bless the leaders and helpers this morning and watch over them and let them know and understand more of your love for them, Lord Jesus. Amen. Tom just said, oh, first of all, good morning, everyone. Tom just said, I didn't know if you, I wanted to ask him any questions. <laughs> Hadn't thought about that, actually. So, uh, Tom, do come and join us. <laughs> I know we are all very pleased to see you back. I am very pleased to see you back. <laughs> well, thank you, Andy. Um, I've seen, I don't think I've watched all of the services online. But thank you for uh, all that I've seen that you have been doing, certainly in the Sunday services, and I know with uh, everything pastorally as well with Anna and with what's going on with you as well. So thank you for all, the, all that you have done. <laughs> you are most welcome. Thank you. So, um, how was the sabbatical? <laughs> so good I'm having one next week. <laughs> um, it was, it was um, interesting. Good. I can't say how does it compare with others because this was your first. It's my first ever sabbatical. First ever I don't know how it's going to compare to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you next week. <laughs> now you mentioned that you were not able to get to Peru this nope. time round, but are there plans for you to be able to do that? Uh, there's loose plans. There's a provisional conversation with a thumbs up yes whenever Scott, uh, who, spoke, who spoke a few weeks ago, um, is next going back to Peru, I will hopefully be going with him at some point in the new year. When I find out more, I will let you know more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Visit Doris's mum. <laughs> well, we certainly look forward to hearing more from you and about your sabbatical in the coming weeks. So welcome back. It's Thank great you. to have you. We come to the time of intercessory prayers this morning, and um, I'd like us to remember the Indian Orphanage. Um, we, we have reached the point, I, I know I've been explaining this over the last few weeks, where now we are, the, the door through which we have been able to pass donations to the orphanage in the absence of this mystical FRCA number that would activate their bank account, the avenue we have been using is now closing. So um, we want to pray uh, for the orphanage as we have been doing. Also, I thought it would be good to pray for some of the events that are happening in the world. I mean, we've, we've got the COP27 that's coming up uh, in the coming weeks, if not next week. We've got the midterm elections in America. There's been elections elsewhere in Brazil and Israel. And those sort of international um, elections and the impact that they have, their ripples spread far and wide and will be felt by us. I also want to pray especially for people who are finding it really difficult at the moment and with the rise in interest rates and with sort of news coming out of the potential uh, cuts in public expenditure, just how difficult people are going to find life. And that was something that sort of um, was really impressed on me overnight. I'm not quite sure why, but I really had that sense. And to say to people that if you are in a position where you are finding the going tough, please do talk to someone. Let them know. Share that with others. You're welcome to share it with people in the church. You're welcome to share it with me and Tom. Um, it's important that you don't go through struggling on your own and without anyone else knowing. So I know it takes 
a great deal of confidence and courage to be able to let someone else know that, that you might be struggling at this time. And also for us to be aware of the people around us, our friends, our neighbours, other people in church who we have uh, concerns for, and to quietly come alongside them and to ask if all is well and just give people an opportunity to unburden themselves. There's, there's something very powerful in just being listened to sometime and having the space to be able to share what's on your heart. So if that's you, or you're aware of anyone around you that's in that position, then speak to someone, let us know, uh, share it, and, and invite someone to sort of uh, unburden themselves but on you as well. So let's, let's come to God in prayer. And as we do so, let's remember in whose presence we are now, uh, we, we now share. Psalm 147 talks about God and he says, he counts the stars and calls them by name. How great is our Lord. His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. And Lord, we stand in the presence of you, our awesome God. Lord, we thank you for Tom. We thank you for the time that he's had away. We thank you for the sabbatical that he has enjoyed. And Lord, the, the, the prospect of part two that could take place in the new year. We thank you that he's back with us and we look forward to his continued ministry with us. Pray that you will continue to bless him and we look forward to hearing from him when he shares and speaks from your word in a few moments' time. We remember in our prayers the Indian orphanage, Lord, and, and with heavy hearts, knowing that the means by which we can support them financially has come to an end. Lord, reading the, the, uh, the final update, in, in a sense, from the orphanage, um, uh, Samson has explained that he has found places for some of the children in other orphanages, but these are not Christian orphanages, which means that the children will be brought up as Hindu. Lord, he continues to be concerned about the poisonous snakes that are able to enter the precinct of the orphanage because there isn't this protecting wall that he wants to see built surrounding it. And Lord, in faith, he is wanting to see that wall completed so that safety is assured. And Lord, we want to pray for him and his family as they continue to rely on your promises. And Lord, we ask that you would do mightily what we are unable to do and that you will care for the children and Samson in the weeks and months ahead. Lord, we pray for people who are going through tough times. This is a very difficult time that we as a nation are going through. We are all feeling the impact of inflation, rising interest rates. We might all have concerns to a greater or lesser extent about the way our food bill is increasing or the energy prices are going up. And Lord, we can feel that we're on our own. Pray, Lord, that you will give us the ability confidence to be able to speak of our concern to trusted friends or that as trusted friends we can reach out to those around us and ask how they are doing Lord we pray for the warm welcome initiative and we thank you for the opportunity that we have to take part in this and we would ask that people in our community, in our church, would avail themselves of the opportunity to come on a Tuesday and on a Thursday to a warm space, to have some warm drinks and some warm food 
and to spend time in the company of others. We pray that you will bless us. We know, Lord, that, that you, you have a heart for those who are struggling. Lord, we pray for big geopolitical events that are taking place around the world right now, the impact of which we will feel. So, Lord, we do pray for the COP27 conference that is coming up in the next few days. Lord, the urgency of climate control and the risk that it getting out of uh, control um, poses for the whole planet. And Lord, we know that when the politicians come together, they can speak fine words. And Lord, those fine words can fall away when difficult times are encountered. And that might be understandable to some extent, but Lord, we ask that there would be courage held to convictions and that there will be wise decisions that are made not just for today but for the future we pray for elections that are taking place in America the midterm elections this month and the way that that could and will be felt by us and the other elections that have been taking place around the world in Israel, in Brazil, particularly with Brazil and, and, and the responsibility, the stewardship it has of the rainforest. And Lord, we pray for people in our fellowship who are in need of a touch from you at this time. Lord, in the silence we can bring the names that are on our hearts to you. Lord, we thank you that you are an awesome God, that your power is absolute. And we would ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And just before I step down, just to say the last session of the Unanswered Prayer course is taking place here in the church at six o'clock tonight. So, see you then. Won't I?
Our reading this morning is from Galatians. And over the next three weeks, including this one, we're going to be spending a little bit of time not looking at the whole book of Galatians, though if you want to read it, feel free. It's a really challenging and good and wonderful book. And you've been looking at the fruits of the Spirit, and the fruits of the Spirit are listed by Paul in the book of Galatians. So it's not unfamiliar from the last uh, couple of months. But I want to read just uh, a few verses from Galatians chapter 2 today. So Galatians 2 verses 19 to 21. And uh, hopefully we'll have it come up uh, in English and also... Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, Galatians 2, 19 to 21. For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Shall we just pray? Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for scripture that lives and breathes and speaks to us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your death on the cross and for your resurrection and for the hope and for the life that that gives to us. And we pray that you would just bless us as we consider these words that Paul wrote. Amen. I, I broke a window. Come up in a second. I broke a window. Not that one. Um, it was worse than that. I was mowing the lawn. And a stone got kicked up. And it hit the window. And it instantly became a spider web of brokenness. Irreparable. And for the next hour or so, it kept on cracking. And cracking. And cracking until it got taken away and dealt with properly. It was beyond any repair and it needed to be replaced. There is brokenness in lots of different places in life. Uh, the, my particular view of myself can be broken and it takes new life in Jesus Christ, I think, for that view to be changed for that window that is broken to be replaced. I wonder, has your view or is your view of yourself broken? Has it been changed? Have you come to faith? Have you come to know that Jesus is the restorer of your soul? Are you transformed and renewed and restored? Because I think when we don't fully look to Jesus, our identity can't be complete. We can't truly grow in Christ-likeness. And if we aren't seeking to live for Jesus and look to him, we won't be changed. Things will still be broken. Now, I'm not talking about the brokenness that happens in life and the difficulties and struggles that we all go through. I'm talking about how we are able to see God and how that helps us to see ourselves. We've thought about the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of these things grow within us when we come to faith. They grow, they don't all grow perfectly or at exactly the same time. And some of those fruits and some of us take an awful long time to grow. Uh, for me, you know that's true. But they do grow. The fruits that bear evidence that we are rooted in Jesus and growing are beautiful within us. They are evidence that our brokenness has been changed that our identity itself 
is being changed. Jesus is increasing in our lives, and we are allowing that beautiful work of grace to take place. Of course, even if we seek to put Jesus on the throne of our lives, we can still make missteps with how we see ourselves, with how we see each other. After all, Paul writes in another letter to the Corinthians that we see as though through a dark glass. So even if everything is running really well in our lives spiritually, we still, until Jesus returns, don't see perfectly. However, there are worse views than a dark glass to see through if there could be a shattered window that needs to be replaced. Like a broken mirror, perhaps. Our faces will not reflect ourselves correctly. We cannot see ourselves or understand ourselves. And the world around us tells us so many things about how we can see ourselves. Or what's the most important thing to see in yourself? What is the most important thing, do you think, to see in yourself? That the world tells us. What does the culture around us tell us is important? Your looks. Well, I'm all right then. (laughs) What else? Body, Body, says Jason. Well, he's all right then. I won't go there. What else? Tina, what did you say? Wealth. Wealth. Not okay there. Um, Yeah. What other things? What is important? What does the world around us say is significant or necessary for you to know who you are? Sorry? Your job. job. Yeah. Are you climbing the the ladder in the right way? When you climb the ladder, you tread on the fingers of the people under you. That's what I got told. In the business world, that's what you're meant to do. You tread on the people you're climbing over to get up, to earn more. None of these things help us see ourselves as we should. There's only one identity that we can put on and that is given to us to wear that allows us to be who we really are. And that's Jesus. And I know that it's a very basic answer to a complicated question, but the answer here is Jesus. Our identity cannot truly be whole if it's fixed on anything else. And so we're going to spend three weeks thinking about our identity. And today it's uh, the, these verses from Galatians 2, 19 to 21, and they deal with being crucified with Christ. And so you're thinking, isn't crucifixion a bad thing, Tom? I've read of Jesus dying and the suffering that he went through, and that sounded like a thing I wouldn't want to go through. You're correct. But Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. Now, he wasn't literally there on the cross, and it's not clear if later on he would die through crucifixion, though some of the other uh, disciples did die in that way. So he's not talking about a physical thing that took place. He's talking about the changes that have taken place within him in his identity through what Jesus has done. Now, the letter to Galatians is a fascinating letter, and it is one of those letters that just, uh, it doesn't start that kindly, because Paul is a bit cross. He's probably only about a year away from having been part of the group of people who have come to faith in Jesus. He has invested himself in telling them about the gospel, about Jesus dying on the cross, about his resurrection from the dead, about how that changed absolutely everything and that there's nothing else needed because that is grace enough to deal with who we are. He has been crucified with Christ. And he says to the Galatians, in a sense, and so should you be. 
Now, the Galatians themselves are a diverse group of people. If we have a look at the map, um, you'll see that it says Galatia in the middle top there. It's very clear. I like our new projector. Um, now, depending on which commentator you read, it's fascinating. Galatia is either a really small area about the size of South End, or it's a really, really big area that touches the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. So we'll go with the blob that's not there because it's just the word. Okay? It was a large area. And there were lots of people who had no Jewish background at all. And they had come to faith in Jesus. Some of these people had come to faith in Jesus. And about a year after Paul has been there, uh, we looked at Paul's missionary journeys and he he went to Iconium and Lystra, which is just to the southern edge. And, and the, the words that he taught about Jesus went north. And people came to faith and churches were formed. Hallelujah, amazing. What a great thing was going on. And then Paul writes this letter in the first chapter and a half. The first chapter and a half are Paul establishing once more with them that the gospel of Jesus that he brought to the church wasn't something that needed added to. He spent three years reflecting on it. He spent time researching it. From the moment that he is met by Jesus on the road to Damascus, he invests himself in understanding the gospel. And he knows what matters. He knows that there's nothing else that you can add to it. He knows that there's nothing more that you need to put on yourself other than knowing who you are in Christ. It's not about who you are in Christ and the strength or your physique or your wealth or your job or your looks or anything else that you could think would be important. It is Christ and all on him. Just before the verses that we read, Paul writes explaining that he even challenged Peter, one of the big disciples, one of the big apostles in Jerusalem, because Peter had been met by God, had realized that all people could come to faith in Jesus, not just Jews, and then had kind of changed a little bit. There'd been a bit of a shift in his thinking. And Paul challenges Peter. And Paul writes about that a few uh, verses before in this book. Jesus has done everything, says Paul. And then he says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The double glazed window unit of his life got changed. His broken perspective on himself was changed. And it could be changed for the Galatian church and it could be changed for us. Because it's a view of ourselves that doesn't put ourselves first. It's a view of ourselves that puts Jesus first. And that is not an easy thing to do. Because there's so many things that are important. And the world around us is very good at saying that what I think about me is more important than anything else. Is that something that you have heard or felt in the culture of the day? You can think whatever you want, but I will think what I want. And what you think about me doesn't matter. And I will tell you what defines me. And here Paul says, no, the only thing that can truly define who you are is who you are in Jesus. Everything else flows from that. But Jesus is the beginning. So when you come to faith, you start a journey of faith. And things begin to change. Habits, attitudes, ways of thinking, ways of speaking begin to change. Because the fruits of the Spirit grow within us. And we change. 
But the change occurs because Jesus is coming first. We have a new priority because we have died with Christ. Now, what does that mean to die with Christ? Well, I think Paul doesn't spell it out here. But if anyone's been baptized, you know that in the baptismal classes in those passages, it talks about when we get baptized, it's like dying to our old self and emerging a new person. And I think there's a sense to which Paul is saying, look, when I came to faith and he got baptized very quickly, when I came to faith and was baptized, I became a new person. I died to my old self. I put away the old ways of thinking, the old ways of being, the old attitudes, the old priorities for myself. They were changed. And then you spend a lifetime working out how those changes are going to impact you. And that's the journey of faith. And that's why it's a blessing to have church, because we get to walk that journey with each other and not on our own. We get to be an us rather than a me. Our theology and our thinking and our identity become corporate. We, churches, not a bunch of individuals. Honestly, you're not. We are an us. Todos, juntos. The core, the centrality, the key pillar in Paul's identity is not his past beliefs or his earthly desires, but this Jesus Christ who really lived, who really taught, who really healed, who really restored people to wholeness, this Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Indeed, this truth is so important that Paul actually shaped his whole life on it and describes it as dying to his old self. And his invitation to the church in Galatia was to go, look, you've added on some additional things. Some people have come and said, look, you also need circumcision. The grace of God, Jesus has died for you, plus you need to be circumcised as well. And Paul's like, look, no, I came, I told you, it's just the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can't add anything that's going to be better than that something it will distract you from what is important what is key what is vital what is necessary and i don't know about you but humans are really really good at getting distracted from what's really really important we're really good at distracting ourselves the most important thing is i'm gonna watch that film (laughs) the most important thing is i'm gonna play that game for 17 hours straight Oh, Lord Jesus, you're, I'm just going to cook dinner. We need to eat. Lord Jesus, I want to live for you, but this other thing is more important to me just now. And there are genuine things that are genuinely important that we genuinely have to deal with. But if they become bigger than Jesus, if they take us away from knowing who we are, We need to get that priority back. When Jesus dies on the cross, there's a curtain in the temple in Jerusalem that gets torn in two. The curtain was big. The height of this room, big. And it was thick. It was a few inches thick. And when Jesus dies, the curtain is torn in two. Because there's a a way that is made for us to see God. And that is in Jesus Christ. Well, why would we put anything in the way of being able to see God? Why would we make something more important or significant in our lives than that? The God who made the universe, the God who made a way for us to be saved, the God who has done all of this in Jesus Christ, we want to live for him. I want to live for him. Paul wanted the Galatians to live for him and not get distracted. So today, as as I draw to a close, I want to ask a question, or maybe two or three. Have you died to your old self? 
Or have you given your life over to Jesus in faith? If you've not, please do speak to me or speak to Andy after the service. We'd love to have a conversation with you about where you're at in your thinking about God. If you're struggling with your spiritual identity, with maybe wrong priorities in life, I wonder if after the service you take some time to come to the prayer space and you can just sit and pray and someone can pray with you and just pray through some of the challenges that you're facing and seek God's blessing upon you. Because our identity is better than a broken mirror, better than a broken view of ourselves. If it is in Christ, it can be made whole. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, I thank you for your work of grace that has taken place in so many of our lives. And I pray for us as a church that we would know your identity as the most important thing, that we would look to you and that we would live for you with all that we are. And in the places in our lives where there are struggles, where there are difficulties, where there are hardships, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would draw close to us and help us have loving eyes open to one another that we may bless and encourage each other as we seek to honor you with all that we are, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we close our service, we're going to sing the song, God Sent His Son Because He Lives. And uh, then we'll say the grace together.
Darcy. Amen. Jesus Christ. Let's let's say the words of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Amen.